Okay, we'll be looking at equations in y equals mx form in lesson 3 packet. So what will we learn today? Um, you're going to learn how to use something called direct variation to solve problems, and you're going to be comparing proportional relationships. So it's going to be a lot of taking what you've learned already and kind of packaging it up a little bit. We'll have three vocabulary words this, uh, for this packet. You can either continue these onto last week's vocabulary page, or you can create a brand new vocabulary page. It's up to you. But these are the three words that you're going to see in this lesson. All right, let's take a look at our real world link. The amount of money David can raise for the Wish Upon a Rainbow Bikeathon is shown on the table. So if he bikes for two hours, he can raise $20. If he bikes for four hours, he can raise $40. And if he bikes for six hours, he can raise $60. It says below. Recall that when the ratio of two variable quantities is constant, a proportional relationship exists. Okay, remember what this means is um, this portion would be where you would take 2 divided by 20 equals one-tenth, oh, my pen, hold on. Okay, let's try this again. There we go, that's much better. Something was sticky on my iPad. So this would be where you took each of these um, pieces of information and if you put them into uh, fractions, they would all equal each other. And if you had a graph, the graph would go through the origin. So that's what this first section is talking about with the proportional relationship. This relationship is called a direct variation. So if you have a proportional relationship, the actual words that we use is direct variation. Okay. So again, if you have a proportional relationship, you're calling it a direct variation. Okay. The constant ratio is also called the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality. So the relationship is a direct variation the ratio would be the constant of variation. So, an example would be, this situation is a direct variation, okay? The ratio two over 20, which simplifies down to one-tenth. One-tenth, so this is the direct, oh, this is weird. Sorry, my pen is not working very right, very well. Hold on. Okay, let's try again. Okay, that it was the pen. So the situation here is the direct variation. Okay, the fact that this is a proportional relationship. This piece right here, this one tenth, would be the constant of variation. So the constant of variation is an actual number. That is, um, like the constant rate of change, if you think about it, this is the, the constant variation is saying that this is the ratio that each of these, um, the two hours, $20, four hours, $40, that ratio that's happening is one-tenth. Okay, let's look at it um, in action here. So it says, complete the steps below to derive the equation for a direct variation. So we are not going to come up with anything for the uh, example above. We're going to come up with just a general equation, okay, that will work for, um, for any direct variation. So anytime we have a proportional relationship, this is what the equation will look like. So if we take our slope formula, what they want us to do is um, we're saying our slope formula is y to the second, excuse me, y2 minus y1, now make yours look better, my pen is still not cooperating, over x2 minus x1. Now remember, this 2 and this 1 that I, that I wrote up here are little. Okay, and that, again, that just means the second y minus the first y. Second x minus the first x. And that's going to equal m. We're calling the slope m. Alright, so what we have happening next is 
If we look at our graph here, I have one point here and one point here. So my two ordered pairs are x, y, and 0, 0. So what happened here is they took these ordered pairs and they plugged them into the formula. Okay, you can see that right here. So we said, okay, I have my, my point x, y, and my point 0, 0. So I'm going to say y minus 0 for my change in y, x minus 0 for my change in x. What's y minus 0? y. What's x minus 0? x. Now, for the next part, we solved an equation. What we want to know is we want the y by itself. And so if you remember equation solving, if I multiply both sides by whatever's in my numerator, I'll eliminate the numerator. So my x's cancel, and I'm left with y equals mx. This formula is the equation of a line that is a proportional relationship. goes through the origin. If you think back to what the activity we did on Friday, all those lines were y equals 4x, y equals 1x, y equals negative x, y equals 0.3x. And if you notice, they all went through the origin every single time. That is because you were, you were graphing equations in the form of y equals mx. Okay, so next page, <clears throat> let's look at our key concept, direct variation. Okay, so we're going to look at this again. So that, that first little part was just a little intro. If you're still, if you're unsure, not a big deal. We're going to go through some examples. <clears throat> key concept, direct variation. This, is, this will be where you want to head over to your vocabulary page. The words right here. A linear relationship is a direct variation when the ratio of y to x is a constant m. We say y varies directly with x. Okay, um, In your vocabulary, definitely write those words down. You can eliminate this last sentence. Um, the other thing I want you to write in your vocabulary would be this. So what I circle in green, definitely um, copy down. So y equals mx, but m cannot be 0. That's the only trick. And jot down a graph. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you don't have to label everything. As long as your, your line goes through the origin, you're fine. And then definitely write an example. Okay? So a lot of what's written here, definitely rewrite in your vocabulary section. So pause and make sure that gets, ha that gets done. The next thing you need to focus on right here the slope of the graph, now we use the word slope in, the, in lesson two. The slope of the graph y equals mx is m. Since 0, 0 is a solution, the graph of a direct variation always passes through the origin. So here's what it's saying. If you have y equals mx, and I tell you to, to see what happens when you have 0, 0 for a, an ordered pair. If I were to substitute... 0 for the y and 0 for the x. I end up with 0 equals 0, and that's true. m times 0 is 0. Because it's true, it's a solution, which means 0, 0 is a point. Okay, and to give you another example, if we had 1, 1, well, if I substitute a 1 for y and a 1 for x, what would m have to be? m, m could be 1, right? And we would have a, a solution, okay? That's that's all that's all that they're saying. Um, it's a little there's a little doesn't isn't really exactly how that works, but that's what they're talking about here. Okay, so something to keep in mind: m is the slope. Okay, so what you might want to do here is go through and arrow to the m and label that m the slope. All right, let's take a look at an example. <clears throat> the amount of money Robin earns while babysitting varies directly with the time as shown in the graph. Determine the amount that Robin earns per hour. So to determine the amount Robin earns per hour or the unit rate, find the constant of variation. Use the points. So what the, all they did is they went through and they found a couple ordered pairs where they could see the intersection of whole numbers here. Okay, that's all they did. You could pick any ordered pair that you want. You could pick three, whatever this is here. 
it, it's kind of silly though. You you definitely if you have to go find points, you want to find points that are are obviously whole numbers. It makes life a lot easier. If you look here, they used a point that was a decimal, and that's silly. But let's just go with it. I think they did it so you could see the these ratios. So we use these points, and they put the points into ratios. So they took our first ordered pair, 215, and made it 15 over 2. They took 3 and 22.5, made it 22.5 over 3. 4 and 30, made it 30 over 4. And when you divide each of those out, simplify them down, you get 7.5 over 1. Because they're all equal, we know that that's our constant of variation. She earns $7.50 for each hour. Now think about that for a second. The numerator was the amount earned. The denominator was the time. We're basically getting a unit rate. Okay. So same as a unit rate. You would need a unit rate because you want to be able to figure out, well, how much is she going to make if she babysits 100 hours? How much would she make if she made babysits 5 hours? If you were actually babysitting for money and you had a goal of how much money you wanted to make, you would want to know your unit rate, your hourly rate, so that you could prepare and you could plan for any events or any money that you want to make. So her her per hour pay is seven dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is on off to the side. Um, write down this statement. If Robin told me she made thirty dollars for four hours, I could verify that by blank. So if Robin told you that's how much money she made, how could you make sure that she was right? You have a couple options. How, describe to me how would you how would you validate her claim of $30 for four hours of work. Hit pause and get that done. Okay, so I want you to try this problem to see if we, can, if we are good with um, this process so far. This is two minutes after a skydiver opens his parachute, he has descended 1,900 feet. After five minutes, he descended 4,750 feet. If the distance varies directly with that time, at what rate is a skydiver moving? So... No. Oops, two minutes. So after two minutes, he's gone 1,900 feet. We're just putting these into order pairs. After five minutes, he's gone 4,750 feet. Okay? And so we want to know the direct variation of time. So I could do feet to... 47.50 over 5. So these ratios should all be equal. So if I were to divide these out, <clears throat> 1,900 divided by 2 would be 950 feet in one minute. Remember, this is feet and minute. And then 47.50 divided by 5 is 950. So these are equal. It did tell us that it's a, it's a uh, direct variation. But um, we, I just double-checked it. <clears throat> so when I divide these and I get my unit rate, it's 950 feet per minute. Okay. Now, when you're trying to decide which number goes in the numerator and which goes in the denominator, just think about the, the, the measurements we have. Do you usually answer things in feet per minute or minute per feet? Usually it's feet per minute. Usually it's the distance over the time. So kind of relate it to something you want, miles per hour. Okay, relating it to something you know is very helpful. Okay, let's look at example two. A cyclist can ride three miles in, point, in 0.25 or a quarter of an hour. Assume that the distance biked in miles y varies directly with the time in hours x. The situation can be represented by y equals 12x. Graph the equation. How far can the cyclist ride per hour? So they want us to graph this equation y equals 12x. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a table. And it tells us here, make a table of values, then graph the equation. In a direct variation, m represents the slope, so the slope is 12 over 1. So if we make a table, I'm just picking times. 0 hours, 1 hour, 2 hours. Okay, so this is your choice. And we're plugging it in. You've done these function tables a million times and coming up with our answer. So what they did was they plotted each ordered pair. 0, 0. 112, 224. Now to find our slope, we remember it's a rise over run. 
and our rise is 12, and our run was 1. Now, one thing to notice here, I went over two spaces, but it's not two units. Okay, be careful because our x-axis goes by halves. So each tick mark is a half of, of an hour. So be very, very careful. Just like on our rise, I rose four spaces, but each space is represented by three um, three miles. So three, six, nine, twelve. So be very, very careful when you're doing a rise and a run. It is not four over two. Not. Okay, so pay close attention to intervals. Okay, very, very important. Okay. All right. Now, in the sidebar of your page, I want you to go ahead and write the following. The slope of this line is blank. I know this is a proportional relationship because, so finish that statement based on example number two. So write your answer in the sidebar. Hit pause. Okay, our last activity here is the got it. Um, do this problem to find out. So I want you to try this problem on your own. See if you can do it. If um, Hit pause. And then check yourself compared to mine. Um, if you are unsure, just wait a second and you'll see the, the work pop up. Okay, so here's my work. There's a lot going on. Um, I'm going to walk you through it real quick. Ultimately, our final answer is that it costs 33 cents for one orange. So if you got that, see, think about how you did that, um, which I, I did a lot of different options here. Um, what I did first was I, left, I wrote a list of how to graph it. So they wanted you to graph the equation. So your steps for graphing is to make a table first. Okay, choose your x's. Determine your y's, and then graph it. Okay. Now, to determine how much per orange, we had to get our constant of variation. That gives us our cost per orange. So all I did here was I created ratios with given my information. $1 for three oranges, $2 for six oranges, $4 for 12. When I, did that, when I divided, I got 0.3 repeating for 1. All I did was I divided each of these. I needed this bottom to become 1, so I divided by 3 and I divided the top number by three. Okay, that's a division. Okay, six divided by six gives me a one in the denominator, which is what I wanted. Two divided by six is 0.3. So that's all I did, so we get 0.33 for one orange. That's it for now. Go ahead and hit pause, we will do the rest tomorrow.